Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to language lesson 156. We are going to begin with our oral language exercises. Then we are going to do review of your subject verb agreement, as well as forms of those troublesome verbs that we introduced last week, along with some thinking skills. And then we'll review your homework for tonight. Let us begin. Simply repeat after me, please. I think it may rain today. Who can lift this box? May I ride your bicycle? Can you ride a bicycle? May I look through your telescope? Can you adjust my telescope for me? May Bethany go camping with us? I may buy her a present. I may buy her a present. I can buy her a present. Okay, again, you should notice the difference between the verbs can and may. Can referring to ability, may referring to possibility or permission. You will notice that the two sentences that were similar basically had a different inflection when it came to the voice. And that is because one referred to possibility and the other permission. All right. Okay. So what I am going to do, I am going to be presenting a few sentences to you. And I want you to identify whether or not A or B happens to be correct. So let's look at the first one. It says for A, the house and the fence needs painting. B, the house and the fence need painting. Which one would be correct, A or B? Now you'd first have to say to yourself, hmm, I noticed a compound subject. And it is house along with fence. So therefore, a plural subject would need a plural verb. We know that most singular verbs end with an S, so it cannot be A, it would have to be B. The house and, and the fence need painting. Let's look at another example. A. Your pen and pencil are lying on the floor. B, your pen and pencil is lying on the floor. Again, you have a compound subject, pen and pencil, so you'll need a plural verb to accompany it. So the correct answer in this case would be A, very good. Your pen and pencil are lying on the floor. The next example for A, it says the girl and her brother knows the answer. And B, the girl and her brother know the answer. You have for the subject girl and brother. So you will need once again a plural verb. So the correct answer would be B, the girl and brother and her brother know the answer. Okay, and the final one we're going to cover is these examples should be familiar to you if you've been keeping up with your think exercises in the past. So we have A, a smile and a thank you are nice additions to any situation. Or B, a smile and a thank you is nice, is a nice addition to any situation. Okay, so you have once again two subjects. Smile and thank you. They are nice additions to any situation. Very good. Okay, so we are moving on now to those troublesome verbs that we covered in previous lessons. And we have them here before us. They happen to be sit and set, lie and lay. So sit means to rest or to be seated. 
the principal parts of sit happens to be sit and setting sat have sat. And then we have set, which means to put or place something. And those principal parts happen to be set and setting, set, have, sat. Lie, on the other hand, means to rest or to recline. Those principal parts are lie, lying, lay, have lain, and lay, which means to put or to place something similar to the definition for set. Those principal parts happen to be lay, am laying, laid, have laid. And remember, we did a little tune last week. You should be familiar with it by now. So you would do sit, am, sit in, sat, have sat, set, am, set in, set, have set, lie, am, lying, lay, have lain, lay, am, laying, laid, have laid. Very good. So just go ahead and practice those different parts using that tune. You should have continued by now, or some of you may have finished page one, 241 on your worksheet. Uh, go ahead, if you have not done so as yet, ensure that you finish that particular section where you are placing the correct verb in the blank provided. I would like for you now to direct your attention to page 242. We're going to go through think A, B, and C together, and then you'll finish it on your own. At the very top for think A, it's asking you to write C in the blank if the italicized verb in each sentence is correct, and I if it is incorrect. So let's do the first couple of examples together. Number one says we sat in our new car for hours. That is correct, so you'd simply write a C on the blank provided for number one. Number two, it says the fly laid on top of the water until a big fish swallowed it. Oh, no. Well, that is not correct, so you would write I on the blank provided. The correct verb in that sentence should be lay. It should say the fly lay on top of the water until a big fish swallowed it. Now, when you go on to think B, you will need a separate sheet of notebook paper because what you are going to do, you are going to rewrite each incorrect sentence from think A using the right verb. So we determined that number two was incorrect. You would then rewrite it with the verb that we mentioned earlier. And finally, for this page on Think C, it's asking you to underline the correct verb in parentheses. So you would simply read the sentence and choose whether or not, in the case for number one, lay or lie would be most appropriate, okay? And finally, for your think exercises, you're going to come across a story on page 243 for think D. And it's the same instructions that we just went over. You're going to underline the correct verbs in the story. So you will notice the first sentence says, the rocket sat or set on the launch pad, pointing its steel finger to the place that it would soon visit, the moon. And in, you would recognize that sat would be correct. It rested there on the launch pad. So you would underline that verb. Very good. For homework tonight, you are going to continue to practice your oral book report. And you are going to ensure that you are ready for that by lesson 158. So you have some time, but be sure not to procrastinate, okay? Have a great day.